What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about methods in Java. So methods are synonymous with functions. If you've heard the word functions before, function, just remember that method and function are the same, but typically you hear method refer methods in object-oriented languages like Java and C Sharp. And the most important thing to really realize about methods is that there are simply ways that you can reuse code. You can put code inside of nice little named boxes so that you can quickly execute code without having to think about the details. And if that makes sense, if that doesn't really make much sense to you, let's just talk about an example. Let's say I'm designing a program where I'm trying to think positively. So I'm just going to say my name three times over and over in a very positive way to kind of get the day going. And I do this many times a day. And eventually I say to myself, golly gee, Teddy, there's got to be an easier way to do this. How can I make this code run? How can I say my name three times every single day? without having to actually type out all this stupid code all the time, what you would do is you would make a method. So with a method, you have to realize what are the exact parts of a method. Well, the first part of a method is you have a name. So you say, say name three times, and we'll call it that. Okay, so we have that, but that doesn't, that doesn't look like code that doesn't really even make sense. How do we do this in actual code? The way that you do it is you put a little parentheses sign, then you put a bracket, then we go down here and we also need to put a bracket as well too. And if you look at that, congratulations. These are the three parts right here. We have just created a method in Java. Pat yourself on the back. So let's talk about a little bit more of the parts. You can name this part whatever you want. It doesn't have to be, you could just, re, you could just name this Pikachu. You can name it something that doesn't even make sense, but typically when you name a method, you want it to be named in a way that can quickly be identified because in other, how do you actually execute this code? What you would do is you would just have the actual what you named it and then you would have this followed by a semicolon you see this is how you actually execute it this is how you actually make the method two totally entirely different things also pay attention to the brackets because the brackets are going to identify scope so whenever a program runs, and we're getting kind of deep here, we're getting really nerdy, but this is something you really want to know. Whenever a program runs, it's going to go through, it's going to parse all of your code. It's literally just going to go one, but it's going to search and, you know, go all through your code. And it's going to look for these little brackets and it's going to store this code right here but it's not going to actually execute it. And what's going to happen is it's, it's going to say, this is a method. I'm not going to execute it right now, but I'm going to have this code for you to come back later and you can execute it whenever you want to. And this is where this part comes in. And if you look at the actual methods that we are describing here, it has the same exact structure, except we have the system out and print line, which we'll talk about later, like what, what exactly is this? But if you look at this part, this print line, it's the exact same structure. It's got a print LN, which some computer programmer made like 20, 30 years ago. And it passes in a Teddy, which we'll talk about later, but it's the same exact thing. It's just the computer made it. And in your case, you're going to actually make your own, but Let's talk about something even more important, and this is going to really help your comprehension down the line when you actually start thinking about how to actually make your own programs. And let's think about, let's make our own Pokemon game, and let's try to think think like a programmer, like Bill Gates says, even though Bill Gates probably hasn't coded in like 40 years. So let's talk, let's, let's make our own Pokemon game. 
And this is really important because you need to understand something very fundamental about computers. Computers can only really do two things. Computers can store data and computers can manipulate data. And even Google, the most unbelievably complex, the brightest minds in the world work for Google. But really, at the end of the day, all people at Google are doing is they're storing data and they're manipulating data. And let's think about like if we were going to make our own Pokemon game, let's think about our state here. So state would be storing data or storing, you know, data here. And we're going to say, well, Pokemon number. So we need to store the Pokemon number for reference. And this would be an example of state. This would be an example of a variable. We've already talked about vari variables were the first thing that we talked about. Congratulations. You just figured out one of the fundamental building blocks of computer science. <laughs> Pat yourself on the back. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how do we manipulate data? We manipulate data with methods. That's real. That's it. You just you just figured out you you just hacked the system. You figured out how computers actually work. So let's just say say Pokemon name, and we're actually I think we'll we'll actually make this one. So or say Poke. Let's just say say Pokemon name. I think that's a little bit cooler. So congratulations myth you just understood the fundamental building blocks of computer science and at the same time you learned what methods are and that's exactly how programmers think okay so before we just were going in here and we were console or system outing each one of these we would go uh pikachu let's just type in a bunch of pikachus and we'll say pikachu three times so we have this and we're beginning to kind of realize here here that our code is becoming very redundant, pretty ugly, and it's becoming just difficult to look at. Just looking at all these Pikachu yells, it's we need to do. We need to clean this up. We need to do something about it. So what exactly do we do? Well, we go down here and we create our own method. And the way that we do that is we go in here and we type in public void and i'll tell you what void is here in a second just don't um don't worry about it and we're gonna go here pikachu and no we're not gonna put anything inside of here we will here in a second and then we're going to take all of this unwieldy looking code and we're going to put it inside of print pikachu then what you do is you just go up here and run it let's see here Okay, and I just figured something out. We need to put static. So what that was is, so let's just break down what exactly public, we'll talk about public static void here uh, right now. So static, whenever you put, and this isn't really important right now, and you will not really run into this much in the real world, is whenever you're running functions inside of this main file, you have to have static. This part's kind of unimportant and just kind of like a weird implementation detail that's with programming languages that have main like this, but void is very important. And why do we have a void here? We have a void here because we're not actually returning anything. We're, we're printing stuff out into the actual command line as opposed to actually returning something. And if you look here, we've got Pikachu, Pikachu, Pikachu. If we were to return a number, or if we were to return an actual Pikachu, watch what happens. And this is very important, and a lot of people don't pick this up until very later on. You will see we get a red line. And cannot return a value from a method with a void result type. What does that actually mean? It means that this does not match this. Void means we're not actually returning anything, but in this case, we're actually returning an int. And when you haven't, or in this case, I'm sorry, we're actually returning a string. And when, whenever you are making a method, unlike JavaScript, you have to be very specific about what you're returning because Java, C Sharp, and a lot of these enterprise level languages, you have to be specific because it's going to help your code become 
more robust. It's not going to right now because the programs are so small, but you will thank yourself down the line when you have annoying stuff like this because it keeps track of stuff for you. So once again, just remember, whenever you get that weird error or whenever you're trying to figure out like, what do I put here? You just return what you are actually returning. And if you're not returning anything, which we were doing before, you need to have this void because a system out print line is returning nothing. Also, let's talk about another really important thing. And that is when you pass or whenever you want to make a method more powerful, let's just say we, instead of say Pikachu, we just want to say Pokemon. We can make our code more robust. We can make it almost more chameleon-like. It can change and it can uh, accommodate to different scenarios because now we can pass stuff in here. So what if I wanted to pass in Pikachu just like this? Now we can execute a method. We can say, say Pokemon, and we can pass in Pikachu. But instead of having it like that, instead of having the actual Pikachu right there, what's going to happen in our programs is that we're going to have variables within our parameters. And if that doesn't like make you excited, that's a really cool concept. So we can just have Pokemon right here. And then in here, we can have our system out, however you want to say it, um, print LN, and then we can pass in our Pokemon. And we can literally pass anything in there that we want. And that is a super, super powerful. That is like, you can't even describe how powerful of a concept that is because like I said, your code becomes chameleon. It can, it can do anything. Okay. So let's just make one of these cool little chameleon functions that I'm talking about. It's kind of corny, but you get the picture. So let's just say public. We're going to go in here. We're going to say public static. If I can type <laughs> public static void. And we're going to say print Pokemon. Instead of print Pikachu, now we can print any Pokemon. And we're going to go up here. So whenever we're coding Java, it's important to realize that this same rule that we had with the void also applies to parameters. We can't just pass any parameter in there without specifying what it is. And in order to actually, the IntelliSense is going crazy. And in order to actually do this, we actually need to declare it as a string. And what we'll go in here and do, we'll say out, system out. And then we'll say Pokemon. And I'm just going to copy this and we're going to say, we're going to do the exact same thing, but instead we're going to actually pass in a function or a variable. So we're going to go up here, we're going to print Pokemon and we're going to say Squirtle this time because Squirtle is by far the coolest Pokemon. Okay. So now we've made our super function here that has everything. Remember, if you take this, you make, if you make this a string, it will not work. If you make this an int, it will not work. It has to be a void because we're not returning anything. And you need to have your string right here for your method. Once again, otherwise, it's not going to allow you to do it. We're going to go ahead, hit that run button, see what happens. And would you look at that? We now have the ability to print our Pokemon three times, and we've made our code a lot more robust and a lot more flexible. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.